we are going to understand the chapter that is classification of animals now classification of animals the foremost uh, we should discuss about the characteristic of an animal now uh, the animal cells are uh, having a well defined nucleus that we say it as eukaryotic they are multicellular organisms which means they are uh, the cells are um, more than one uh, they don't have cell walls the cell walls are basically present in plant they are autotrophic in nature as uh, they rely on autotrophs for the uh, for the food the animals reproduce sexually and few asexually as well these are the characteristics of an animal now in the animal kingdom is basically divided into two groups that is vertebrates and invertebrates vertebrates are animals that have backbone they have firm body because of the muscles that connect to their skeleton invertebrates are animals that do not have backbone they have a soft inner bodies which are held in shape by a flexible covering of outer cell or by a hard covering called exoskeleton this is the two uh, groups in which animal is being divided and we will discuss uh, invertebrates more in depth as you can see on your screen the different examples of invertebrates and vertebrates as in uh, invertebrates you can see uh, sponges are there jellyfish worm uh, octopus uh, insects star uh, starfish as in vertebrate column you can see fish birds mammal reptile and amphibians come all right these are the examples of invertebrates and vertebrates now in this chapter we will going to discuss uh, more on the phylum part and the, it is the next rank after kingdom it is more specific than kingdom but less specific than class almost 30 to 40 different anim animal phylums are there uh, which uh, here we are going to discuss about the nine major groups the first one is phylum porifera the sponges phylum snidaria the jellyfish or coral phylum platyhelminthes the flatworm phylum nematotoda the round worms phylum annelida the segmented worm phylum mollusca uh, uh, clams and oysters they are the seafoods what uh, what we eat phylum arthropoda the jointed legs i mean insects phylum echinodermata that is starfish and phylum chordata which is having the vertebral col uh, columns and we have discussed the different examples fish mammals amphibians they are uh, we will discuss uh, that animals are there in phylum chordata so we will discuss each one more in detail in our in our upcoming slides thank you we are going to discuss about phylum porifera which we say it as pore bearer now here they are the simplest animals which cannot move as you can see uh, in the pictures they are having sponges and you can see one more thing that they are having holes or pores in them and these pores are known as ostia now these ostia they take in water from the opening of sponges as you can see in the different uh, uh, diagrams which are there enclosed in it now these uh, they have numerous pores in them as it enters from these pores food and oxygen try to enter and circulate within the body now the sponges are classified as animal because they are multicellular they are heterotrophic they do not contain cell wall 
they are having a specialized cell we say it as collar cell they are cylindrical and their body is not exactly symmetrical they are asymmetrical and different examples are uh, cycon euspongia we say it as bath, bath sponge sponges and spongina with this i hope that phylum porifera is clear to you all Now we are going to discuss about phylum Cnidaria or the name is Colin Tarata. Now the features, they are marine animals as you can see in the diagram. They have a hollow cavity and they are having a single gut. Now here gut means a stomach. Now the opening surrounded by tentacles as you can see in the diagrams which is made up of snedo ballast or snedocytes now these snedocytes are or snedo blast which help in protection or the protection is basically uh, done by uh, nematocytes and these uh, tentacles help in protection and feeding their body is radially symmetrical now radially symmetrical means that they do not have any left and right side all right and the examples are hydra aurelia coral and sea anemone clear or coral is also uh, one of the example now we are going to discuss about the phylum platyhelminthes the flat worm let us discuss uh, the characteristic they are soft as you can see in the picture they are flat and only few millimeter thick their body is bilateral symmetry and it means that they are same from left and right side they have a head region at interior end they do not have any circulatory or respiratory system they have a nerves and excretory system like here excretory system means they are having a single gut which acts as a mouth, a mouth and as the anus and they take in food and throw waste through the same opening now they move by cilia or a muscle cell they can be free living or parasitic in nature now parasitic in nature uh, i mean uh, these uh, the planaria and the tapeworms they lives in our human body and especially tapeworm can grow ar uh, around 15 to 30 centimeter in a in a human uh, body and uh, a, which can infect a person so uh, the examples are of uh, phylum platyhelminthes is a liver fluke tapeworm and planaria I hope with this the phylum of Platyhelminthes is clear. We are going to discuss about the phylum Nematotoda or it is also known as Nematelminthes or the roundworm. Now the features we are going to discuss as you can see in the pictures different type of uh, Nematotodas are there. Now they, you can see the similarity in the picture that they are unsegmented, means their body is not divided into parts. Now second, they are thread-like or cylindrical in shape. They are having a soft body with complete digestive system, which means that they are having both ends, anus to intake food, uh, sorry, uh, mouth to intake food and anus to excrete it. They are parasitic in nature, which depends on the host and they can cause serious problems to the animals. They are bilateral symmetrical, they are bilateral symmetrical, which means that the, both the ends, uh, I mean, uh, are same, left and right side. The examples are Ascaris, uh, Filarial worm, Hookworm and Pinworm. Now uh, we will uh, discuss in short about uh, the problems which they uh, bring to our human body or to the animals. The Ascaris try to block the intestinal uh, uh, passage and which brings vomiting 
to us. Filarial worm is increases uh, the increases the tissue uh, breadth and uh, which uh, brings elephantiasis, which we have discussed in class six. Hookworm and pinworm they try to lay eggs and uh, we start itching we start feeling uh, the itching and we try to uh, scratch our skin or body part so with this your phylum nematotoda is uh, discussed i hope it is clear to you all now we are going to discuss about phylum annelida you have already seen the earthworm have you ever noticed that their body is soft they are ring like segments or we say it as annulus ring they are having on their uh, body now their body is divided into many parts as uh, they are having a digestive musculatory circulatory nervous and excretory system now the digestion is basically done in pharynx oesophagus then from the food is passed from oesophagus going to the crop and from crop it goes and stays in the gizzard and gizzard acts like mouth it crunches more the food into into simpler into simpler form and then it passes to the intestine now from the intestine the foods which have to be excreted are from uh, through the special tube called nepherida all right now they are uh, they are having a uh, closed system with heart as circulatory system they are having brain vertebrals in their nervous system and the excretion is done by nepherida clear and the examples are earthworm, nereus, leech, and sandworm. I hope phylum Annelida is clear to you. We have discussed about the segmented and two unsegmented worms that are roundworm and flat uh, flat worm. Now. Uh, we will understand and learn the difference among them now the segmented worms comes under the phylum annelida round worm comes under the phylum nematotoda and flat worm comes under the phylum platyhelminthes now phylum annelida they are having a segmented body part means their body is divided into parts different parts they are having a bilateral symmetry the bilateral symmetry now you must be cleared that a, a body is divided into two same part uh, that is left and right are same now roundworm they are the unsegmented and bilateral bilateral symmetry symmetrical with the same way flatworm is also uh, unsegmented bilateral symmetrical and they are flat and thin bodies they have now segmented worms lives on moist soil fresh water or salt water roundworm lives in wet soil or water flatworm can be parasitic and can live inside a host or in water now they a segmented worm is having a complete digestive tract which means that they are having mouth to intake food and anus to excrete food round worm also have a complete digestive tract in which two openings are there mouth and anus mouth acts to intake food and anus to excrete but flat worm is having one opening which acts as mouth and anus both now calomate um, uh, the calomate is basically they are calomates which is having columns 
Now this column is a fluid that surrounds the mesoderm. The mesoderm, as you can see, I have shown in the figure that how their body is being uh, 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 layers, the body layers. The outer body covering, as you can see in the figure, is known as ectoderm. And the inner digestive tract where the tube is there, they act uh, and they are termed as endoderm. And in between, they are having a muscle layer, which we say it as mesoderm. Clear? Now with this it is uh, you will be able to understand now this column is located between the intestine and the body wall clear now for the round worm they are pseudo colomate which is developed from the three layers means endoderm mesoderm and pseudo column the pseudo column you can see the white portion is known as pseudo column and a colomate which develops from the three layers but do not have any body cavity examples are earthworm leeches and for roundworm uh, for uh, phylum nematotoda pinworm hookworm and for phylum platyhelminthes planarium fl liver fluke and tapeworm I hope uh, the difference is clear among the three worms to you all. Now we are going to discuss about the wormy compositing. Now this wormy compositing is very popular in India these days and not only in India but in other part of the world as well. What it makes, it makes the soil fertile. It is also known as farmer's friend and it is done by the earthworm as you can see in, in the picture. The earthworm try to live in the small soil during the daytime and at night they excrete in the form of small pellets and these small pellets make the soil manure. This is known as wormy compositing. It also helps the soil to be airy through which the roots of a plant grow. Let us discuss about phylum Arthropoda. They are the largest phylum of Animalia group which includes insects. Now the uh, figures which you are seeing with all the animals you are familiar with. Now about the basic characteristic about them. They, uh, they, and as you can see the similarities in the figure that they are having a jointed uh, legs. Now, the first is they are the invertebrates. They do not have any vertebral column in them. Their body is made up, uh, some of the animal's body is made up of exoskeleton. And this exoskeleton is nothing, just a hard covering to protect from the predators. And it is made up of calcium carbonate. Their body is segmented because it is having three uh, parts, yeah, that is head, thorax and abdomen as you can see in the picture they are having a joint appendages now appendages is nothing just uh, a distinction of from one animal to the another uh, it try to uh, join uh, uh, one to the another part that we say it as appendages now their body is bilateral symmetrical now bilateral symmetrical i hope now with this term you are familiar it means that the same on both the side left and right they are having an open circulatory system to it they are having a complete digestive system complete digestive system includes anus and mouth mouth to intake and anus to excrete and they reproduce sexually the examples are prawn spider cockroach moth and ants I hope with this the phylum arthropoda is clear to you. We are going uh, to discuss about phylum mollusca or mollusk that is the second largest phylum of animalia group. It, as you can see they, uh, the different pictures in the mollusca uh, phylum that they are having a soft or the shelled bodies 
and the soft body is covered by the shell which is made up of calcium carbonate in order to protect from the predators now uh, we will uh, discuss the different characteristic feature of uh, phylum mollusca they are the invertebrates which do not have a vertebral column they are having a soft body inside and the shell to cover it from outside they are unsegmented bodies very important it is that they are the unsegmented can you figure out the head thorax or abdomen as how you uh, bifurcated in the phylum arthropoda no but their body is bilateral symmetrical which means that it is same on both the side left and right they are having a mental which is a hard shell and they are having a foot for the movement or for the locomotion and the examples are snail, slug, octopus clear with this i hope that phylum mollusca is clear to you all I'm going to discuss about the phylum echinodermata now uh, we should uh, there are the different uh, uh, pictures which are there on the right side of your screen uh, starfish, sand dollar, a dollar, and sea cucumber, sea urchin are there. Which you, uh, they are all. Uh, some of them are being eaten by humans. Now the important characteristic that they are radially symmetrical. Now here radially symmetrical means that they do not have any left and right, as you can see in the picture. Can you figure out any left and right side? No. Now they live in the salty marine seawater. In the deep seawater, they live. Their body is unsegment, uh, unsegmented. They do not have their body is not divided into uh, parts. Now they, their body outer covering is being spiny and skinned in order to protect and hide from the predators. They are having a two feet which helps in the movement or locomotion, and it also helps. To feed as well they are having a complete digestive system which includes mouth and uh, anus mouth to intake and anus to excrete so with this your phylum echinodermata is also discussed I hope you must have understood the all the phylums of invertebrates now we are going to discuss about the vertebrates only 2% of uh, animals are vertebrates in the phylum uh, which belongs to phylum chordata. Now the uh, vertebrates include fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals including us. Now the characteristic what we have uh, discussed already in the starting of the video. The animals are multicellular and they have a eukaryotic cell. They don't have cell wall. We we belong. We goes in a phase of embryonic development. Animals are consumers, or you can say that we are uh, heterotrophic in nature. So we rely on the autotrophs for food. Animals can move. They are having muscles and nervous tissues as we are having it and the animals are deployed now here deployed means that we are having um, the genes from our parents the examples as there are so many examples which you which you see in your daily life a frog rat zebra bird and us so with this your vertebrates are this much to be discussed 